Hi there, welcome to the Johnny Jenkins Show. Good afternoon if you're watching with us live or good morning, good evening if you're watching uh, another time. It's really lovely to have your company today. Well, it's been a very hot week in the UK, hasn't it? It's, it's a little bit warm here where I am and I've got a beautiful sunshine in front of me uh, looking out into the sunny South End on Sea where quite a lot of people have been flocking to this weekend. We'll have a little bit of a chat about that. You might have seen that uh, on the telly. Also, the Johnny Jenkins Show hasn't been with you for the past couple of weeks. I've had uh, a bit of time off, but I'm interested to know uh, how things have changed over the past couple of weeks. I know the whole stay at home message, which we heard a lot from the government has changed, doesn't it? And it's that stay alert message. Is that something you can get behind? Do you think the government here in the UK are handling things well? Do you think that they're giving enough money out? Do you think they're giving too much money out. They're, these are the topics uh, we're going to be having a chat about. I know they've now voted to remove their virtual parliament as the MPs go off on a two-week holiday in the middle of a global pandemic. Is that the right thing to do? Uh, also, I know a lot of university students uh, watch this and we would be right in the middle of term three at the moment, the third exam term. What will you most uh, miss about term three? Uh, will you miss that putting your head down, revising, working on a sole thing and then achieving it in the exam perhaps you'll miss just hanging out with friends in the sunshine maybe you would have missed Eurovision which was due to take place just a week ago uh, these are the sorts of things uh, we're going to be having a chat about on the show today but I can't do it alone I've got a fantastic panel on the show with me as usual and as you know it's tradition that we welcome on Enoch first hello Enoch hello Johnny how are you Yes, I'm very well, thank you. I've been soaking up the sunshine this week and, and sunbathing outside, loving yeah, it. How I things? I heard, heard you and Southend having a great time with all the sunshine, having a lovely beach holiday. No, I, you know, things have been okay down here in London. It's been very warm for once. So lock, lockdown's become a little bit more bearable. Now you can, have, you can go sun yourself outside. It's, been, it's nice. Because it's always, what I find, where I am, I'm about 45 minutes from central London, and it's always yeah. a degree or two hotter there. Um, but yeah, South End, oh my, I don't know if you saw the, the pictures and the videos of, of I, the No, I've been, I've been following the entire thing. I think my favourite interview I've seen this week was that that lady was like, we drove to like two hours to get here today, and it's absolutely packed, it's, it's despicable, no one's listening to lockdown. And you have to think, why did you come then, if you think they're breaking lockdown rules? It's all very, oh, you know... It's, a complete nightmare, I think. Yeah. The one I loved was the guy in Brighton. He's got his beer and he goes, you know what? I just don't think we should be allowed at the beach. I just don't think we should be allowed down here. Yeah. I think we should be in lockdown. We can have a second spot. Yeah. Like, Mate, you're the problem. Yeah, it's like, just go home. You can all just go home by choice. No one's making you be outside. You, you, from the way you talk about it, I think Boris Johnson personally marched, marched all their houses and said, go to Southend right now and have a lovely time at the beach and buy an ice cream on me and give him like a tenner. But it's ridiculous. Just go home. You know what the, the thing about all of this is, and people won't realise it when they see it on the news, but this bit of the beach, which which they film and has all yeah. the people on, is like the most grotty part of South End Beach. There's so many nicer parts which the tourists never go to. That's the way you can yeah. tell if they're tourists or if they're locals. Yeah. Well, how many locals are there out there then? Is it all tourists or all locals? Um, I, well, it's it's going to be a mix, I think. Yeah. But I think a lot yeah. of people are visiting. Um uh, like all places, really, you know, you walk around and there is still yeah. quite a lot of people. A lot of people, I think, also not following the social distancing. That's that's what gets me. I went out for a walk last night, went past a skate park not far from my house. Yeah. And there's loads of kids there just all, all standing yeah, with no. each other. They don't all live together. To be honest, I think in London especially, social distancing has really sort of ceased to exist. Most of the shops, I think, most of the shops that are open have basically given up on enforcing it. Um, people just don't care anymore. I think some people are really... Boris Johnson, I think, has made the mistake. People now think lockdown is over. And I, I yeah, I just don't think I don't have that sustainable. I think the trouble with it as well is a lot of the time people think they are social distancing. They think they're keeping um, their distance and they're doing the yeah. right thing, but no one really knows how big two meters or, or six foot or whatever it is. Uh, people don't really know how big that is a lot of the time. Um, and the other thing, I mean, you mentioned obviously Boris Johnson's decision here. It, the the police having problems because it's it's not a law; yeah. it's a guideline, and, and yeah. so they're not able to enforce it. Well, anyway, we'll get into all of that in a minute. Yes, we're, we're getting yeah. ahead of ourselves, Enoch. Let's meet the next panellist. It's the host of Front Page here on Raw, Noah. Hello, Noah. Hello, Johnny. How are you? Yes, very well, thank you. Um, just, I've got the last couple of weeks of uni, Noah. The last couple of weeks of, I'm on my last essay now. Brilliant. Got, Same here, I'm, too. I'm just, I'm on a roll. I just yeah. can't wait to get it done. Product, productivity all the way. 
Yeah. Exactly. Now, Noah, you, when we uh, last spoke on this show, so you had just ago. kicked off. Yeah, it was a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? You just kicked off your new show, Front Page. I know yeah. you've been doing it for a few weeks now. How's it going? Yeah, we're a few weeks in, so we've done four episodes, and it, I think it's gone very well so far. I'm not sure what um, all the viewers think, but I, I hope it's a nice sort of gentle start to a Monday morning, a real sort of mixture of you know my views because I have plenty of views. Um, looking at all the newspapers, all the tabloids, and the broadsheets, and a bit of culture too, because like, we love the news, but we also love the culture. So I hope it's a nice sort of yeah gentle gentle start to the week. And it's all interspersed with some sipping of your tea, isn't it? Yes, oh, of course. I've got my tea here now, which, yeah, I might have that during the show. So if you hear some slurping during uh, other panellists making fine contributions, then that's my fault. I take full full blame. But we have to have the tea. That's Yeah, that's part of it. I wouldn't expect anything less, Nova. It's great Thank to have you, you here. Yeah, it's great to be here. <laughs> Let's welcome in the next uh, panellist today, uh, Ollie. Hello, Ollie. Hello. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you. How's things? They're good. I mean, just getting through essays on the final stretch now, but yeah, things are good. Things are as well so, as they can uh, be. So you study politics, don't you? So are yeah, these essays that that you have to do that are part of the year, or are they these these weird reflection things? No, so they're the essays that we were scheduled to be completing around this time anyway. So yeah, nothing. Just exams that have been cancelled so far. So yeah, and, it was all predicted. <laughs> Oh, okay. And, okay. and something I'm intrigued by is, is obviously, you know, a lot of people have still got all their, their belongings on campus, haven't they, or or in their houses? Yes, in, in I'm one of them. Uh, so I was going to ask, is your stuff all still there? Yeah, I mean, I did bring most of it back at the end of last term, but I couldn't carry that, like, have everything. So I've got a few belongings there. I'm just waiting now for an email off the university saying that I'm allowed to go and collect the rest of my stuff. I mean, it's not, it's not like I need any of it now, but it's just it would be nice to just go and get it and then obviously that would be done with the accommodation for the year because it's just, just a bit annoying having stuff left around there. Well, it's weird, it's, isn't it? It's, it's, if, if, if anything like me, we left for Easter um, just for coming back for, I think I was planning on coming back for sort of three, four weeks and I'm now being, what, nine, something like that? It's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's mad. I think I was planning on going during the holidays, but obviously lockdown came in to force quite soon after term ended, which meant I couldn't get down there. So it is what it is, and I'll be able to go soon. We'll cross the bridge when it comes to it. I'm sure we'll find yeah. uh, Let's bring in Lucy, who is one of the station managers at Raw. Hello, Lucy. Hello, Johnny, my love. How are you? Yes, very well, thank you. And I'm even better, Lucy, because we had a text conversation earlier today, didn't we? We did. So I, I text Lucy, me and you. No, hold on, let me start again. First message, next year, term one. Next message, me and you. Next message, breakfast show. I mean, I could only say one response. Yeah, that, it, I? Obviously, it was a downright no. I just said no, oh. full stop, completely. Oh. No, of course I said yes. Oh, I'm so excited, Lucy. What day should we do? What day can we? Because you're the boss. Surely we can just get whatever slot we want. Now that isn't down Red to is me. Program that is... controller. You can't. Don't, exactly. don't take us away that from is that. down. That is down to our lovely program controller, in who has responsibility over all of that. So you'll have to be in her good books. So, okay, hi, Rin. Really nice to see you. Hope you're well. Hope family's <laughs> okay. Um, so, so if we did have choice every day, Lucy, what day would we do? Well, you can't do a Thursday because it's after pop, but then pop is probably not going to be a thing next year. If we're, if I don't we're want to do Friday, Friday because then, assuming I keep my slot now, I'd have two in a day. That'd be quite a lot. We could do like, yep. put them on Wednesday because then the circling, it'd make it quite a long day. Maybe like Tuesday? Tuesday would work. We'll have to see what Rin says. Yeah. I used to do the um, Saturday breakfast one and just could, like, go out on Friday night and come in on Saturday morning. And yeah, I, I learned from my mistakes doing an afternoon show now. Anyway, Lucy, it's very good to see you. Um, how's your mum, by the way? Is she okay? Yeah, she's doing well, thank you. We're uh, currently, we worked at the beginning part of the week in the family business, so we're currently at home for the next few days, which is nice. Uh, she's cleaned every single kitchen cupboard, every wardrobe. We, I've done my wardrobe, we've been very productive. I wouldn't expect anything less, and you know what, I went to a post office the other day, and I thought of you both. Anyway, let's bring in our last panellist, uh, Remy. Hello, Remy. Hello, Johnny, how are you doing? Yes, very well, thank you. Um, I'm enjoying my beautiful view of sunshine and, and a blue sky outside. Um, how's the weather where you oh, are? Oh, yes. Oh, lovely here down in Leafy, Surrey. Pretty much the same as where you are, I think. And we've got lovely countryside to add to it. What, what more can you want? 
Exactly. Well, I suppose no global pandemic would be the top of my list. <laughs> uh, what have you been up to? <laughs> well, uh, perhaps not. Well, uh, like the rest of you guys, just, you know, uh, finishing up on those essays, just uh, trying to get those last few references down and try and generally polish them off best I can. And just trying to, like everyone says, get on the last stretch now. Yeah, we're nearly there, aren't we? You know what? I, I'm not sure what summer's going to be like because uh, w when we haven't got the essays and things and haven't got, you know, you need to focus on, it's going to be very peculiar, isn't it? Yeah, strange. Strange for sure. Uh, I think we're going to have to get used to this more uh, online working stuff for sure. Hopefully yeah. we'll find something to keep ourselves entertained. Yeah, I mean, I know we've seen a lot in the news this week about some universities putting lectures online and things. And I know Warwick have put out a, a commitment, I suppose, to make as much face to face as possible. But I just don't yeah. understand how a lecture could take place in, in normal circumstances. Maybe sort of classrooms, discussions, seminars and things might even take place in lecture theatres. I mean, then I suppose you distance that way who knows who knows anyway uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves um thank you all for being here it's very nice to see you all uh, you're watching the johnny jenkins show be it on facebook live on i think we're on twitter today as well or perhaps on catch up somewhere and um with the fantastic panel today we've got quite a lot to get through because uh, after our, our two weeks of Africa, i think we've got quite a lot to catch up on uh, i also i first want to touch on this change of message then from the government which we heard about a week and a half ago now getting on for two weeks from the stay home uh, which i always thought should be stay at home not stay home but whatever uh, from stay home to stay alert a shift of message uh, things becoming a little bit less black and white and a little bit more gray area um Noah, let me come to you first do you think um looking back on it now almost two weeks later that this stay alert message has been successful um, not particularly, because I think it's sort of slightly patronising in its aims. I think people are always staying alert from the moment that the World Health Organisation declared the coronavirus a pandemic. I think they were already being attentive and they didn't need a government to tell them that. And also lots of people made the remark about, well, how can you be alert to something that's so small? Um, you know, the virus, you know, you, can bear, you can't see it. It's just not possible. Um, and I think it also, yeah, it doesn't look at, you know, stay at home is a very explicit, a very clear message. And it's clear that people were following that. I think in the government's own um, guidelines, they expected about 75% of the population to follow the rules, whereas it was closer to 90%. So it was a clear guidance of what you had to do under law. Whereas the stay alert message, I think, did lead some people to think that lockdown was over, where in fact all we've done is moving to the next phase. And all I know anecdotally um, from where I am in Cambridge, it definitely does feel a lot busier. Whether that's just people returning to work because um, some non essential workers were told they could go back to work, or just people being out and about, it definitely does feel busier than it did say uh, four or five weeks ago and then boris johnson himself called it an invisible mugger and i would quite like to know how you could stay alert of, of an invisible mugger i'm not too sure um i do think things are getting busier as well i i go to work once a week i go on a wednesday and i drive there and the roads do seem to be getting busier and busier every day but like you say it, it's anecdotal evidence really um lucy coming to you do you do you agree with noah or perhaps do you think actually things are going quite well and the stay alert message is working um no i am in big agreement with noah the i've seen it coming through our front doors so obviously for those who don't know when i run a post office and we were classed as key workers so work didn't really change for us we carried on going to work as much as possible but when the lockdown started at the very beginning there was we were manic to the door all day for about three days but that was everybody sort of trying to do everything before they went into lockdown um, and then we went extremely quiet uh, we still had a fair steady flow but slowly um, it got busier and busier and busier and as soon as this stay alert message has come into play it's completely reversed it. We've been as busy as we will be at Christmas, which is quite worrying. It's the one time you will only ever hear my mum or me actually say we don't want to be busy because it would mean people are being sensible and staying at home. Um, but we're noticing the types of transactions that we're doing because obviously we're not doing uh, financial services or currency or things like that. But we are doing an increased amount of mail uh, and banking. But that is what we're classing as essential because banking businesses need it if they are still functioning to get money into bank accounts so they can pay staff if they are classed as essential or they're just trying to survive. Um, and likewise with mail, a lot of it is about the mental um, effect of that. Because a lot of people are posting birthday presents, gifts and cards just to cheer people up and to keep 
that connection there, which is really good. But we've seen a distinct change in the nature of nature of custom, but also the frequency. And for us, it's quite worrying because you don't feel safe. Yeah, I mean, I've certainly been posting friends things a bit more. You know, if it's someone's birthday, I've been posting them whatever. I think people are using it a little bit more. Lucy, have you ever thought about doing like a, a fly on the wall documentary of your post office? Well, you joke, but we made we joked a few years ago that there should be something like a sitcom. Because the amount of things you wouldn't believe that walk through our front doors, you would probably find quite entertaining. One day, one day we're going to make it happen. Yeah. Ollie, uh, I know you're someone who's yeah. got a lot of views on things. What do you think about the, the stay alert message? No, I'd agree with him both, Lucy and Noah. I think that the, the transition from stay at home to stay alert has led to people's behaviour becoming a bit more careless. Like I know Lucy said, it's in post office. I work in a supermarket and I think people are becoming they aren't as strict with themselves as they were before like far more people now are willing to pay with cash which obviously isn't good because you're you know your people are touching cash they're giving it to you and then you're giving hours change so obviously the it's not as safe as using card and far less people are willing to use card now also i don't feel like when you walk around the supermarket people just aren't staying two meters apart like they maybe were five weeks ago and i would put a lot of that down to the fact that the government has seemed to have moved away from this stay at home and i don't see why they have done because the advice is still to stay at home and work from home if you can so i really don't know why it we've switched to stay alert because i think it has led to a change in behavior amongst a lot of people and that isn't a good thing is it at the moment because we're far from the end and i know in scotland they, they said actually that it's a devolved matter and the stay alert message of course we should emphasize it's just for england only uh, mm. scotland have now sort of changed things up and said well some things are allowed the, the key message remain stay alert. Ollie, you mentioned like going to the shops and people not always social distancing. It's something I've seen no. as well. Are you yeah. wearing a mask when you go? Um, I'm not wearing a mask, but a lot of people, I would say less people are wearing masks. I mean, I'm just going to talk about my own circumstance, but I'd say about five weeks ago, one in every two customers probably wearing a mask where in the supermarket I worked in, whereas now it, do, it does seem um, less people wearing the man gloves as well, less people wear gloves. So now I think people are behaving more carelessly than they were maybe a month ago. Yeah, I've certainly yeah, I've been certainly. armed with a mask, although I haven't quite solved the problem of the mask and sunglasses because it's been very warm. It's but people wear them it. and then take them off at the till and it's like, if you're going to do that, what's the point in wearing yeah. it in the first place? Yeah. like... My favourite people are the ones that cut a hole so they can breathe better. <laughs> <laughs> but it is what it is. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it, it's, it's crazy times, isn't it? It's something we're going we're to look back on and, and you know have a lot of memories, be they good or bad about it. Um, Remy, what about you? Do you think that this stay alert message from the government and the implementation of it over the past couple of weeks that has been a successful thing? Well, uh, Johnny, I would really agree with most of what's been said already. I don't really have too much to add. I mean, before the message was extremely clear and by and large, um, people were adhering to it. But now that the message has been, well, you can go out, but stay home if you can. You can go do that, but make sure you social distance. And that is very easily being interpreted by everybody in their in their own different ways, as, as, as has already been said. And unfortunately, we now begin to see people be much less disciplined um, than they were previously. There have been videos, you know, people packing into tubes in London and onto buses to go back to work. We saw the what happened in South End on the beach. Um, so, you know, frankly, I don't really think it's been that successful at all. They've opened the door and the nudge, now the floodgates are, are completely open. So I don't think it's gone as well as it should it uh, could have. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people will be in, in agreement with you there. I think one person we haven't heard from yet is, is Enoch. What's your thoughts? Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm in full agreement with the panel. This has not been a well-managed transition. The stay at alert is not working as well as stay at home, Dad. Um, but one thing I would say on the mask comment, actually, is from what I've seen in London, mask use has gone up massively, um, especially in my area. Because before you'd see people have a makeshift mask, but very few people had masks at all. Whereas now, I think about every third person has a mask and is wearing a mask when they go outside. But there's still way more people outside, more people not wearing masks. The queues, queues for supermarkets have gone incredibly long and people just given up saying two meters apart at all. It's a complete disgrace. Yeah, I mean, I'm in complete agreement with you there. Um, I think masks are essential. 
I have actually got a pack. I've got a pack online and I've been wearing them out yeah. to the shops. And I've, anytime anyone else leaves the house, I can take your mask, have your mask. Yeah. I've been quite, been quite strict with it. Um, yeah, like, I, I want to talk about schools. Um, I know this wasn't necessarily something I told you about, but I want to talk about schools because the government have, have got this plan, this roadmap, and part of that is reopening schools at some point. And they say that uh, from the first, which is week on Monday, 1st of June, they want to start reopening some schools or in, in a phased way, perhaps with some younger years in and then exam years in secondary schools. Um, Noah, uh, I, can, I can see you nodding. Do you think that this, this message of, of bringing kids back um, when a lot of people aren't going back to work in the first place uh, sets the right tone? Yeah, no, I, I may be in disagreement with most of the panel here and that I do think um, schools should gradually reopen from the 1st of June for three reasons mainly. Um, firstly, the risk perspective. From what I've read, um, children are both unlikely to catch the virus or to pass it on to other individuals and therefore I think so the risk to children themselves is fairly low and um, while you'd also have sort of a staggered return so it would only be certain year groups so that way if you had teachers that were older and had underlying health conditions and they could remain at home while ensuring that there were enough teachers um, to still uh, teach children. Um, secondly for sort of an equality perspective um, for many children they just don't have the suitable conditions at home to work, they've either not got internet access, they might tragically be in domestic sort of violence households and there are just no conditions for them to learn at school. They have someone looking out for them. They've got, you know, a hot meal of the day. Um, and thirdly, just sort of from an educational perspective, generally, I think that sort of process of education, you know, the pursuit of knowledge, that's one of the reasons why we're all hit for it all at our universities because we believe that, you know, the pursuit of knowledge uh, and ingraining children with the fact of things you should know as well as children sort of finding themselves and making new connections is so important. And so I think the benefits of education um, outweigh any of the risks that there are to those three year groups that will return at primary school uh, level. Ollie, do you think schools are, are ready to reopen? Yeah, no, I would agree with Noah there. I'd, also, I'd, like, I'd add to what he said about it being a safe space for many children, but also it's worth mentioning that before the lockdown came in, the R rate was far higher than it is now and everyone was still in school. So, I mean, there is also the argument that children are less infectious and less likely to pass the disease on. So I think it is worth children going back to school at the earliest opportunity. As Noah says, not everyone will be going back at the set at the current time. It would just be staggered in year groups bit by bit. And I think the missing an entire term is quite a lot of um, education that children are missing out on. So no, I would agree that I think as long as it's safe to do so and it's managed properly, then I think it should happen as soon as possible, yes. Yeah, and obviously they're doing some some form of online education, but they're certainly not uh, going to be having the same experience uh, with their education. I think we we all can understand that fr from our sort of perspective of university. Um, Remy, what do you think about schools reopening? Do you think actually they should hold off? They should do the same thing as Scotland, which is wait until after the summer holidays, uh, and then the coast will be much more clear. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Good question, Johnny. I'm sort of caught in the middle on this one. I would agree with the other panelists in that school it's is a crucial part of, of many children's lives. Like like has already been said, it's a safe space for them. It, it gives them a hot meal in some cases, and most importantly of all, it enables them, especially for exam years, to to enable them to catch up on work and to make sure they they carry on with the syllabus. I mean, my sister's um, currently in her first year of GCSEs. The fact that she's missed so much time could potentially be very damaging if she comes to take the exams next year. There is just one thing that concerns me. Although it's children are not said to be as infectious as adults, something, that, something else that's been coming up in the news lately is um, an even more severe form of, of COVID-19, which is related to what's called Kawasaki syndrome. And that tends to hit children particularly hard. And I think if we don't watch that risk, there's a risk that we'll end up with a new problem on our hands. So. I do think schools should go back. It's an important aspect of children's lives, but we need to make absolutely sure that the measures in place uh, to protect children for things like social distancing or basic hygiene are, are really rock solid and very visible. So I think sort of a compromise as such needs to be reached there. Yeah, and I know there's been quite a lot, a lot of scientific discussion around this, and I think, I think the guidance that the government is following, and I think it's going to be released today to, to both parents and teachers. So hopefully that that will bring a little bit more clarity. Lucy, if if you're you know a few years younger and you're in school and they said right you've got to go back a week on Monday, would you feel ready? Um, I I don't think I would. I wouldn't. I suppose 
it, it is difficult to say because there's the balance between um, ensuring you're getting a good education, but also is it really worth it? Because you've got to think the children are going to be back for about four weeks and then it's the summer holidays. Now, with older children who are doing GCSEs or going to be doing an A-levels and things, I can see that as being beneficial, but you've got to understand that a lot of it is lost over the summer holidays um, before you go back in September. Not only that, it's also the risk, albeit, yes, it does children aren't uh, uh, more likely to sort of get the disease, they can still be carriers of it. Now, this is where what worries me because coronavirus has been proven it can still really badly affect people who don't have underlying health conditions so okay you can take teachers that may be affected um because they've got underlying health conditions out of the situation you can isolate family away from these children that are going back to school but there are still people who have been perfectly healthy that this disease has been lethal towards now this is, will have potentially have a detrimental effect not just on um, families but also the teachers themselves now you can't you've got to be practical here especially with the younger years can you socially distance a four-year-old five-year-old however old child from his teacher that isn't as plausible as it is doing say anyone in the in a senior school that's far more realistic um with younger ones you can't sort of expect that and then if that's the case should teachers be uh, equipped with the right ppe in order to do so should they be wearing gloves should they be having visors that's where it gets interesting you, but in fact they're just looking in the Oh, on, just because I remember seeing a because in France they're now beginning to reopen primary schools, but just because Lucy mentioned the PPE for teachers, there was literally a, a, a young child of about four or five who was coming into school and her teacher was wearing a mask, but literally the child got frightened because she didn't recognize her own teacher. And, and I think there was a, a was, was it head of a teachers' union or a headmaster who said recently, you cannot social distance in schools. So it's a real dilemma here. Yeah, I mean, you're just bringing me on to, to, to what I was going to say, is that actually I'm not sure you can social distance in schools. And you, you may be able to get year 10s and 12s so the exam years, which the government is keen to get back into school. And, and you may be able to put them in a big hall and space them out or have a certain number in the classroom and, and hope that they get some form of decent education. But little four and five-year-olds uh, and six-year-olds going back to school, I, I just don't think they can social distance. It seems to me, um, personally, that it's just a way to free up childcare and actually that to then start sending a few uh, more parents back to work. Um, yeah, uh, Remy, what's your thoughts on that? Well, no, I'd, I'd completely agree. Um, I think, yeah, my mum came up with, a good, with an interesting theory about it. And yeah, the reason they're letting the younger years go back first is that so their parents can, can go back to work. And personally, I, I would very much agree with her because obviously you can't leave a four, five, six-year-old child on their own. The only place where realistically they can be looked after is school. So again, but then again, you can't expect them to social distance. So it's your core between a rock and a hard place, pretty literally here. It's difficult, and I certainly wouldn't want to be the person making this decision. Enoch, if you if you had the decision yeah. to make, and it was either send them send them back, follow follow what's happening at the moment, get them back a week on Monday, or actually let's hold off until after the summer holidays, what position would you take? I I have to be irritating here, taking middle ground, um, <laughs> as I always, <laughs> I <don't know> <laughs> I always <laughs> do. Um, <laughs> the, the way. There was. Um, the independent sage, um, independent um, sort of um, sage report came out today. They basically recommended that even if we just delayed school reopening by two weeks, that can have a massive positive effect. I think the best course of action right now is we hold off on going back to school until we're absolutely certain the R is well, but be well below a prescribed number. Let's say zero point five. That's even possible. And then instead of a summer holiday, at least partly this year. We just reopen schools instead. So it's schools then going into September, people can just go back to normal education uninterrupted. And that will help solve the issue of losing education over the summer, which would already be massively awful with what's happened this year. And just give, give everyone more of a chance to prepare for what's going on. I think my position would be probably to, to open them in August and open them yeah, a month uh, early, yeah. put an extra half term in there, um, obviously give the teachers more money for, for working that extra term, and the government doesn't seem to be short of giving out money at the moment. Um, <laughs> who knows? Uh, it, it does seem, for now anyway, that as long as those tests we keep hearing about are met by the government, that a week on Monday um, some kids could start returning to school. We should say, of course, schools are still open, and that, and that the children of key workers and vulnerable um, parents and, and guardians, of course, still can go to school 
the teachers are still working. They're just doing it from home. Um, look, let's get on to the next topic. Uh, we're about half past three now, halfway uh, through the show. And I tell you what, it's flying by today. We've got some uh, fantastic panel. I want to talk a little bit about, obviously, this beautiful sunshine we've had and the lovely warm weather, the hottest day of the year on, on Wednesday. Um, temperature sitting, I think, 28 since somewhere in Sussex and 27 uh, in most places. Where I am in South End, just... 10 minutes from where I'm sat at the moment is the beautiful South End seaside and it, it was all over the news. Can I hear an ice cream van somewhere? I'm loving this. Oh, Enoch's muted himself. Must be uh, <laughs> oh, Enoch, he was oh, just making God. it a bit of a festive mood. He was like your, your free sound effects person, Johnny. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. uh, Sorry, it's all my ice cream van circling around. I don't know. No one's going to buy ice cream today. I don't know why he's... Let's get the orders in then. Um, yeah. I'll have a 99... Um, clip over Noah. Uh, <laughs> 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 it, it, it's just by magic. I'm just talking about the seaside and the ice cream van box stuff. Um, anyway, sort of 10 minutes from where I am, uh, beautiful, beautiful beaches, and people just flock there from miles away to go and visit to have a nice day out. It was on the most part of in government guidelines as long as they kept their two meters at the beach. And I know a lot of people did, and probably some people didn't. But do you think it's right that these? Uh, places are allowed to be visited from so far away. We hear reports of people coming from miles and miles to come and visit. Uh, just one example, we're here in South End. I know Brighton and other places have had similar experiences. Do you think it's right that people are able to travel so far to go to the beach, to go to these beauty spots and perhaps put themselves and put each other at danger? Remy, you look like you've got something to say. I don't know. Like, just I think the one uh, word answer to that would would be no. But yes, obviously the lockdown is is being relaxed somewhat. But then again, if you've got people coming in from large distances and you have somebody who doesn't show symptoms but is a potential carrier of the disease, and let's be honest, like in a school, who's going to really maintain social distancing on a beach, especially with the weather being as it is? And if, you know, the disease gets passed on through that way, then you get a second spike and then all the work of the past few months will, will be for nothing. So for the time being, I just think uh, the notion of people coming in from miles away is, is a definite no-no. And with national parks here in Surrey, it's the same. The uh, National Trust has been um, warning people to stay away from parks and beauty spots all on account of the lack of social distancing. Do you think this happened because the guide, the guidance, and that's all it is, guidance, was so ambiguous? It said, you know, you can travel wherever you like in the country for, for your for your unlimited exercise as long as you don't stay over um, and stay a night there. Do you think that because that guidance was was so sort of broad like that, that people are just are taking what they can get and, and visiting these these beauty spots? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think it's definitely something to do with that. I mean, uh, like has already been said, it is just guidance and it's uh, non-enforceable. And I think it's written in such a way that it can be interpreted in in a lot of of different ways. So I think people are just uh, taking liberty with that, unfortunately. And I think that's what's partially what has led us to where we are now. Uh, Enoch, would you would you take the opportunity to go and visit? Uh, let's let's not just limit it to beaches, but you know, yeah. uh, country parks or, or go to some of the beautiful parks where you are in London. Would you take that opportunity to go and, and spend the day there and perhaps put yourself at risk? Um, no, I don't think in this in this current state, I don't think I could. I just don't. I know we see we always see pictures of people. Everyone, everyone sort of the way thing all these pictures people take of everyone sort of breaking social distancing is. Everyone who takes that picture is guilty of the same crime in that they thought, if I go here, no one's going to be around. It's going to be relatively empty. I can just have a nice time at the park. <clears throat> the fact of the matter is, we just have to take a bit of personal responsibility. Not something I say a lot. Personal responsibility in these times to help the public health. And so I wouldn't <clears throat> personally feel comfortable going to some a park like that and spending the afternoon there. Yeah, and the other thing with, with all these pictures and you see the beach and it looks really busy, for example, is that, of course, if that picture was taken from overhead and then from above, yeah, they'd probably, probably look a lot more spaced out. It's just the, yeah. the angle sometimes. The zoom these lenses, things. yeah. Yeah, uh, the, the angle these things are taken at. Noah, where you are is a beautiful part of the world as well. Uh, do you think um, these places are right to be open for loads of people to go and visit? Would you, would you go and soak up the sun? 
Well, I wouldn't go to a beach, but that's because I'm not a massive fan of beach holidays. But if I was in London with a lovely, you know, lovely part that was in London, I probably would take that risk um, to go in. I think part of the government um, issuing sort of more ambiguous guidelines is probably part of their broader strategy to move more responsibility from them over how people um, live with coronavirus and move more responsibility to the individual. And as Enoch said, individuals having to make choices about the risks that they want to take. Because I get the feeling the coronavirus, the COVID-19, in some form or another is going to be with us for a long time even if the R rate you know, remains slow and continues to fall I don't think it'll be eradicated for a long time not least until we get this back, all important vaccine that might not be um, for another year so I think until then remaining in lockdown for another year just isn't practical or sustainable so I think in, in the UK at least the ambiguity is probably part of a broader uh, government strategy to transfer more responsibility on the, to the individual and so they've decided to use that risk um, to go to the beach but but I understand that obviously they have they've passed this. I understand that they have passed this responsibility over, and and I'm with you on that. But do you think that's the right thing for them to do? Uh, the right thing for the government to have done, or the right thing for people to do? Or... The government to, to have made it um, yeah, in that way. Yeah, I mean, I, they probably have, have got to do it in the stages, and they were right when the government said that their future advice will be framed by the number of new cases, the number of tragic new deaths and the reinfection rate so inevitably their response you know the whole well there is a sort of general path moving us from phase five to phase one or the other way around that is always that can always be variable and i think it is a yeah, broad reflection of people are, individuals are at some point as uh, more people go back to work they are going to have to take more of an option about what risks they want to bear so as i say you know there would be some if there was a crowded pub open i wouldn't go into that but if there was a really nice you know huge country park near me where it was very easy to socially distance that is a risk i I would personally be willing to take. Yeah, and it, it all comes down to, to the personal um, decision that, that you make here. And, and that's that's what's so uh, peculiar about it, is that it isn't legislation, it is just guidance. Lucy, do you think we'd be in a better situation now when it comes to people's social distancing and keeping their distance and not uh, having to crowded gatherings? Do you think we'd be in a better place if this was law and not guidance? I, I think we would definitely because people, okay, people do still challenge the law, but they don't do it as much as they will be doing now. The one thing that worries me, I do agree that there has to be a lot of personal responsibility. That is true. You have to have that no matter what uh, you are talking about in government, there is responsibility on the general population in some way, shape or form. However, when there's something like this, it's life threatening to so many people. I just don't understand how people are being stupid is a really insulting word but i see it when i'm at work we have markers on the floor where people are meant to stand we are limiting people when they come into the shop but we still have to ask people to move to do stuff so i'm in a visor i wear gloves i'm also behind glass two levels of glass now actually which makes me feel very lucky but I still have to take parcels in from customers, take money off customers. So I have to open a door or a hatch to lift these things through. And that means I'm in their personal space. So I'm repeatedly having to ask people, would you mind leaving your step into the right? Just so I'm not, even though I'm wearing a visor, because it isn't foolproof, um, in breathing the same airspace. Them. And I'm still having people questioning me and refusing to do so. So really? I think, yeah, I, I have people... Yeah, I have people shouting verbal abuse at me and saying things like this because they refuse to, because they don't believe it. They think it's exaggerated. When I'm stood there next to my mum, who is high risk, who is working because she's a key worker, also it's her own business. So I don't, that's when it gets to me, when I see people that are just doing it or for the sake of it or aren't taking it seriously. I do agree that if there's a national park near you, you should be able to go. But I'm not 100% agreeing with the fact that people should be able to travel because I don't think it's fair on the locals who are having to cope with this. I've seen it in Derbyshire, neighbouring county to me, um, Melton Mowbray, Pat, my main high street. The locals were scared to go out and that shouldn't be happening. You should be able to go around where you live. Albeit, I agree, lots of people may not have back gardens. I'm very lucky in that I do. But OK, you still have your local area and whether it's scenic or not, you're still allowed to go and walk around there. I think that's far more realistic. And I be I do agree, it isn't a long-term thing. But I think measures like that should have been going on far into the summer, into the warmer months, where people are going to get more and more, they're going to chance it more. We've seen them chance it more, even under lockdown. So I think this is just giving them sort of the legitimacy to do so.
Hey, Lucy, you got a fan in the comments. Sasha, Lucy talks a lot of sense. Hey! <laughs> yeah, I'm backing you, Sasha. I'm with you there. And thanks for watching. If anyone else has got any thoughts, of course, uh, you can comment them down below. Just make sure if, it, if it's been shared out somewhere that, that you're watching it on the, on the Johnny Jenkins page. And then uh, I can see your thoughts. Ollie, I can see you eagerly waiting, chomping can at you? the bit to tell me your thoughts about, about distancing and gathering. What do you think? <laughs> Yeah, well, first of all, I'd agree with what Lucy said. I've had abuse from people at work just for simply telling them to adhere to social distancing rules. And it's not right because you're only doing your job. And whether they think that's exaggerated or not, that's their own opinion. And they shouldn't be putting other people at danger just because that's what they think. But I mean, I think what people have said about personal responsibility is absolutely right because I think people are expecting the government to spoon, spoon feed them every single bit of advice and they're not going to do that. People do need to use their common sense. So if they want to go and travel somewhere, I'm okay with that as long as they are obeying the, the social distancing rules. It, it's like people seem to want every single circumstance possible um, explained to them by the government. And it's a case of you need to use your common sense because they aren't going to be able to possibly answer everything in all the press conferences that they do daily anyway. So I just think that if people want to travel to places and exercise and things, that's fine. But I just wish people would stick to social distancing rules and they are more than they seem to be doing at the moment. Mm. And, and the other thing I'm conscious of here is, is that we do often just see one side of it and we see the pictures yeah. of the busy places but but the empty places of people adhering to these rules don't always um, you know don't always make no. the news and, and the rest of it uh, Remy did, did I did I hear you waiting to say something uh, no no I mean the, only just for a problem as big as this I think everyone's just got to you know put their backs into it and do what they need to do I think the government needs to try and do its best to uh, to try and cover all the situations within reason but equally i think us as ordinary people have just got to step up to the mark and try and like uh, ollie said use common sense and just do our best to keep everybody else safe we're all in the same boat together so we we've all got our part to play here remy for prime minister who said that uh, remy you've got a report <laughs> somewhere in the background uh, oh sasha's back great show johnny <laughs> Thank you, Sasha. Thanks for the comment. Good, good to see you. Uh, glad you're enjoying it. And we're on Twitter today as well. We're on Periscope. So if anyone is watching there, hello. It is a new thing. We'll, see it. well it's not new. It's new to me, at least. Uh, we'll see if it's working. Who knows? Anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. We've got a lot to get through uh, as we fast approach four o'clock. It's, it's about 20, uh, 20 minutes to four now. And um, we spoke earlier about this term three that we would be in i don't know what week would be in now we'd be in what week five six something like that five, um, yeah. five okay now we've done it and then we would be yeah. um it's so <laughs> weird isn't it it's just so weird doing it from home not being there not experiencing term three which i know uh, besides the exams and the assignments and whatnot people do say is is the best term a lot of the time uh lucy you've obviously experienced the term three before and i'm aware um, and as, as have you, Remy, and I'm aware uh, our other three panellists might not have. Um, what will you miss most, you know, reflecting on, on last year's term three, for example, what would you miss most about um, this term? Um, I, I think a lot of it is the social aspect, because obviously, um, obviously doing a politics degree, um, you in term three a lot of it is revision and then it's your exams and essays and things so you're not under the same sort of pressures but you can also it's also the fact the one main thing i'm missing i was talking to remy earlier and some of our other friends we were actually we're just missing being able to say go and work for the day do some revision then after that go and sit on the terrace in the back of the gut with a drink in the afternoon in the sun it's simple things like that or going into leamington and sit up or just the more the social aspect. Obviously, the main thing for many Warwick students in term three is Eurovision on the piazza, oh, yeah. which as first years you will have this, which is it's heartbreaking. It's an incredible experience, very busy, and it it was one of the most the best times I've actually had at uni. And the daft thing is as well, I'm also missing. I'm actually missing doing a live radio show. It's quite odd. You know, talking into mics, having a proper desk, things like that. We can that. see why they um, made you station manager, Lucy. This is a propaganda yeah. campaign going on right here. Yeah, that, that's all it is. That's all it is. But no, I'm, I'm missing the simple things of being able to walk in somewhere, say, like, or walk into the SU or walk into T Bar. I'm picking campus places, but walk into somewhere in Leamington and see someone that you know and be able to say, oh, hi, do you want to get, get a coffee? You know, it's the small things that I'm missing more rather than the big, you know. 
going and doing stuff. It's the little things I think that you miss. Giving someone a hug as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just normality, isn't it, that we're, cool. we're craving for? Uh, Lucy, you mentioned Eurovision. We know, of course, that's that's famously the best night of the year. Uh, but Noah and uh, I don't know, Enoch, if you've been a part of it as well. No, uh, there, I wasn't been... invited. Oh, OK. No, well, no, <laughs> you, no, you were invited. <laughs> there's been uh, this, this Raw Does Eurovision, uh, this sort of virtual situation. Tell me about it. Well, it, oh yeah, it's it's simply brilliant. If you've got five hours to kill, then I know uh, which direction to point you on the mix cloud. We've um, released the first two episodes, and it's just it was an absolutely brilliant time uh, going through all the sort of semi-final songs, hearing them live, and then giving our instant opinion, and then a score out of twelve. And there were plenty of brilliant songs, uh, but also lots of completely dire songs, and even some mediocre songs, which I think is worst of all. At least we had a terrible song um, rather than a dire song. Um, yeah, giving our scores, giving our views, um, but it, it took a long time. Too, but it was really really enjoyable to hear what um people thought and you know seeing all the sort of talent or lack of talent across um eurovision but in terms of term three i think what well, i mean obviously i've not experienced term three but i'll just really miss the company of others you know from especially in term two i really enjoyed going into sort of the raw you know studios being a guest live whether it was on insight or your show and it's it, it's great doing it online it's great that we've got stream yard here but it's simply not the same you know i was considering applying to do a show um for term three which obviously i've been very lucky enough to do online but again that's not the same as doing a, a live show and so it's just a different experience but yeah I think the social aspect and the company of others is the thing that I'll, I will miss most and it is strange to think we won't see people until September or October if that if um, term is delayed. Yeah I mean obviously uh, the university said they, they're going to do as much face-to-face -face as possible next term but uh, not next term well I suppose it is next term isn't it term one of next year and um, they may well do but it's certainly not going to um, be the same remy uh, as someone who's had a, a term free before has experienced it this time last year what will you be missing most i uh, really i've just got to say um i'm in complete agreement with lucy i mean yes you have the exams and you have the assignments to do which are the perhaps slightly more stressful bit sometimes but like lucy said at the end of the day you just go with your mates you just go for a little drink somewhere either that whether that be on campus or whether that be in in Leamington or Coventry and just make the most of the lovely weather that usually comes this time of year and and just sit around and chat and you know have just have a have a nice time and like you said the word I think you hit on the word normality I think that's something like which I miss a little bit to some extent as well and yeah the social aspect normality um and just you know really making the most of your time as a university student that's something I miss for sure you know what I miss? I miss most more than anything else is the coffee machine in the politics conference. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, who, 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 can, who can forget about the coffee machine? The things I'd do for a number That's 81 with a double strength. Oh, the things I would do to be back there and then pressing the button. You'd have to wipe down the buttons now, wouldn't you? You'd have to have your hazmat suit on. You wouldn't be able to drink. Oh, oh dear. The days, the days when we get to have one of them again will, will, be, a good, will be a good day. Uh, Ollie, rather well, than not the you, the machine. <laughs> yeah, uh, rather than asking you, Ollie, uh, what you'll miss most because of oh, I had an answer prepared for that. Uh, no, no, no. I'm just going to rephrase it. Don't worry. You can just sort of churn out your um, Rather than what, what you'll miss most, what were you most looking forward to? Um, going back to the Dirty Duck, obviously, and just in his videos because the fact that we will never see one of those again for anyone who does the PR21 module. It's so sad, but I mean, on a more serious note, I'd probably have to say just the satisfaction of um, completing first year uni because I know we're doing it online, but as everyone else said, it isn't the same online. So yeah, probably just the satisfaction of having finished first year, but obviously the dirty duck too. Yeah, number one. Um, who haven't I come to? Enoch, I don't think I. Yeah, no, no. I I think... For some reason, it's just the, the the way you seem to be working today is I keep coming to you last. I must be saving the best of last. Um, you know, uh, first of all, ice cream van. Where's it at? Where's one ninety nine? Second of all, what um, have you missed most? Um, I'll start with the ice cream van. Last I saw it, it was heading down towards the park, so I should be I should have lost it for a couple of hours. What I miss most, I you know, I was really looking forward to skipping those last few world politics lectures, which I can, which I can't do now, which is uh, an absolute classic. <laughs> for the door. Um, no, no, just just doing anything else really. Mostly oh. singing in the raw office. That was what I did most of the time. Um, but I guess I, also, I was also looking forward to my first ever Eurovision. I've never watched Eurovision before. And oh. so I was, yeah, I was, Ooh. that was my first Guilty time watching too. it, which was not happening. No anymore. wonder you weren't invited <laughs> to the Royal Eurovision. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, but I, get, 
I guess I'm just going to agree with everyone else. But I really missed the social aspect of being on campus and having a world that was bigger than you know my house, my family members, two children who don't speak any, who don't speak. That was I really I miss talking to people. Really, that's why I miss talking to people. Wow. Yeah, it, it's it's difficult, isn't it? But I suppose we can yeah. only hope that that at some point soon um, we get back to to some sense of normality. And next year, term three, oh, it's going to be good. Eurovision next year. It's going to be very good. I'll, I'll take your word for it. I've not yeah. seen it. I don't know what it's like. I don't like. I have a vague well, collection of images I associate with Eurovision, and it's, it's mostly extraordinary. And that's yeah. it. <laughs> don't get your hopes up, Enoch. Right? The actual the actual program yeah. isn't necessarily that good. It's just it the experience. <laughs> yeah, Johnny knows a lot about the experience last year, so it, it was entertaining. <laughs> oh, I've, I mean, I've heard some stories from last year. Itself, <laughs> I think we're, we're yeah. trying to waters. I don't think we really want to go to. So, um, <laughs> moving on, <laughs> let's bring it back to the Johnny Jenkins show uh, here <laughs> on Friday afternoon on Raw uh, and uh, Facebook and, and Twitter. Or perhaps you're watching uh, on demand on Catch Up, and if you are, then hello, welcome, and thank you for being here and for sticking it out uh, as well. And now this isn't this isn't a plug. This isn't a, a sponsored thing or anything, but I do just want to tell you that, that the library at the moment are doing this campaign. Uh, I know at the moment, obviously, it's difficult at, at home and accessing all the resources you need. They've got this campaign called More Books, eBooks, and you can go onto their website, uh, on, on the library website, and then you can um, tell them what books you need, if you need any, uh, what books you'd like to be made available online, if they'll help your, your study in any way. So, um yeah, that, that's um, that if you need it. And also, I've been doing quite a lot of videos with the library if you haven't seen them. So uh, perhaps you want to want to go and check them out. Um, look, we're coming towards four o'clock, coming towards uh, the end of the show and bank holiday weekend fast approaching. Lucy, do you get the bank holiday Monday off? I do. I normally work Monday, so I'm actually off for a Monday for a change. Uh, what about you, Ollie? No. A closed on a bank holiday, you've got to be kidding. Absolutely oh, really? not. <laughs> What are people are buying? To pick up on the bank holiday. What's like? Are they going for like alcohol, supplies? Yeah, well, lots of alcohol. I think that's people's way of getting through it. I think by drinking lots and lots of alcohol and gin and vodka. Alcohol consumption is obviously through the roof with all the pubs in the town being closed. Yeah, of course. Um, I, I wonder what's going to happen when pubs are open. I don't know if you saw those videos online of the um, the rubber rings in the pubs where people had to walk around with a massive rubber oh, ring around yeah. them because it would keep their two metre distance from someone else. I want to be there. I want to go. I want to try it. I want to try the rubber rings. Um, Noah, bank holiday weekend, anything planned for you? Well, planning my show because I'm not taking the Monday off. Front page will be definitely uh, live here at 10 o'clock on the dot. So you better be uh, up early to watch it. Um, other than that, yeah, final essay preparations and um, writing some articles for the ball and just sort of trying to yeah enjoy myself as much as possible, really. So you're not taking the Monday off. Someone who always takes the Monday off, uh, or who is this time, is Enoch. <laughs> I... <laughs> You know what? I've done I've done more shows this term than you have, Johnny. So you can't you can't start with that. Um, I I know I I'm going to be working on essays. That's more all, that's all I seem to do anymore. I'm going to be working on essays. So that's what I'm going to spend my entire bank holiday doing. I suppose when it's over, you can have you can have a big celebration and um, have your bank holiday then. I mean, every day basically is a bank holiday now because I don't have <laughs> I'm not currently employed. So all I all I do is I I go I do radio shows I work on essays I talk, I babysit show that's it that's all I do so what about this for an idea I did hear earlier in the week that the government were toying with the idea of putting a bank holiday in October perhaps when this is all over um, to to have one then to have a bit of a celebration assuming things can be somewhat uh, more normal than they are now of course the government has said this comes with huge economic costs um, to, to have a bank holiday but they've obviously spent a lot of money. Uh, already. Remy, could you get behind a, a, an October bank holiday? Could I get behind an, an October bank holiday? Well, um, yeah, I think as long as things were were arranged properly, and as long as, you know, the costs were bearable, I mean, you'd have to ask economic experts what bearable means, but I wouldn't say I would be against it altogether. Wally, you behind another bank holiday? Absolutely. 100%. This might be something that the whole panel agree on. Noah. 
Oh yeah, no, I mean, I'm all for it, but I doubt it will affect, affect us much as university students because they aren't exactly going to cancel lectures or seminars if there is a bank holiday Monday. But yeah, no, the more the merrier as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what they do actually when it comes to bank holidays. They'll probably be on strike. <laughs> Whoa, shut on dig that. Ooh, that was, that was right, a, Noah. That was a right, cheap shot, Noah. Noah. <laughs> Lucy, did you get behind the bank holiday? I Yes, I, I agree because it would actually give uh, my mum a day off work if it was a bank holiday. So I'm fully behind it. Okay, well, let's see if we can anyway. make this a full... Fair point. <laughs> if we can make it a full house, Enoch. You know what? Stuart Croft from just one hell of a party, and that'd be a perfect day for it. A bad <laughs> one in October. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, I feel that's a good place to leave it, guys. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Very nice to, to see you all and to, to interact with you this way. Um, Enoch, there's quite a lot of shows coming up uh, from yeah. Raw and Raw News over the yeah. next week. I mean, yeah, you know, um, while I'm inside taking a Monday off, no, no one else is. Um, so this, this Saturday, we've got News Into 10, which is a a more humour focused show. Then we've got, of course, Noah's show on Monday at ten o'clock. Front page, can't miss it. And then Tuesday, Cam Hall bring you your turn to view, which is excellent every single week. I have to advise if you want to try and contact him to get on it because it's a brilliant show to be on, but it's also brilliant just to watch. So I would absolutely advise watching that. Great, oh, uh, great. Wait, oh, actually, sorry. one last thing. I can't forget the this. The Raw one. Sports. Oh, sorry, Lucy. Were you? Go on. Uh, the Raw Sports Quarren Stream, that's that's on this Saturday, and that's always a great, great show. I, I, I follow no sports, but it's always interesting just to listen along. <laughs> I was about to say, the, the, one, the one day I have a Monday off, I was actually going to say to you, like, oh, I'll come on Insight. I won't now. I mean, if you if you want, Lucy, you can have Insight back for one Monday and just do the show. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone's going every... another time. We're, we're sort of live at the moment, guys. Yeah, I think everyone's traumatised enough as me, with me doing Insight, so I think we'll leave it there. Yes, hello, welcome, it's Lucy, and this is Insight, it's just after 12 o'clock. Um, anyway, look, 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 we're getting carried away. Um, thank you all for coming on, really nice to see you all. Uh, stay well, and I'm sure we'll see you again soon. There we are, we say goodbye uh, to the very silent panel. Um, thank you for watching, very nice uh, to, to join you this afternoon and for you to join me. Um, if you've been watching live, thank you for being with us. Perhaps you've uh, been watching on, on demand on catch up. And uh, if you are, then I hope you're having a lovely day, whatever you're getting up to. Um, and I'm sure we'll see you again very soon. Goodbye.